What's up you guys? Today I just want to go over a few things about electric bikes that I didn't know when I first started that I think might benefit you. And they are voltage, amperage, and wattage. And how to calculate things like amp hours, watt hours, all those different questions. How to know how long a battery is going to take to charge depending on how many amps the controller, the battery charger is. So let's get started. I'm going to use this 2024 Wired Freedom as an example. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. I reach out to everyone that leaves a comment and I like to help anyone who may have a question about a bike they're looking to pick up. All right, so two of the most important numbers when you're looking at an e-bike are the voltage of the battery and power system of the bike and the amperage as well. So for starters, this is a 60 volt bike. It has a 40 amp controller, okay? So you're gonna have, the basics are the battery, the controller, and the motor. Okay. Now, the battery itself is a 60 volt battery. This particular battery has 20 amp hours of storage. So think of amp hours as the amount of amps that can be put out over a period of time. So. In this case, now every battery has a different discharge rate, meaning how much power it can put out per hour. But this is saying that if you put out one amp per hour at 60 volts, it would take 20 hours to discharge this battery. Now the reality is with a 40 amp controller, you have the ability to put out a lot more than one amp per hour, okay? So just think of this number here, 60 volts. Think of that voltage as how fast the motor can turn meaning what your top speed is basically gonna be. Okay. If you have a 36 volt system, you might be able to go anywhere from 15 to 20, maybe a little bit faster miles per hour. If you have a 48 volt system, which is very popular with these types of e-bikes, you're gonna be able to go a little bit faster, probably up to 25 to even 28, maybe 30 miles an hour. If you have the next step up, which is a 60 volt system, you're gonna be able to go even faster. This bike in particular can go 40 miles an hour with this 60 volt system. Now a big factor in that is gonna be your weight and also any gearing of the bike and pedaling assist and also the terrain, whether you're going uphill or downhill. So that's the voltage. So think of the voltage as your speed, as how fast that motor can turn, okay? The higher the voltage, the faster you're gonna be able to go. If you have a 72 volt, e-bike like some of the surons and some of the e-ride pro ss bikes you might be able to go up to even 60 miles an hour with that voltage now the next number like i talked about is this amp hour so think of the amp hours of a battery as the storage meaning how many basically gallons you would be able to fit in a gas car's gas tank that's what 20 amp hours kind of stands for in the electric world so the higher the amp hours, the more capacity, the more range, the more energy you can store in the battery itself. Now you might see a number printed on the side as well, such as the 1200 watt hours that you see there. Now the watt hours is again, a very similar number of storage, but it's more specific. So 20 amp hours at 60 volts, if you multiply those numbers, gives you 1200. So if you multiply volts times amp hours, that will give you watt hours of capacity. So it's just a more specific number because it's including not only the 20 amp hours of the battery, but at what voltage? Because if this 20 amp hours was at 12 volts, you would have a lot less capacity in that battery than you would if it's at 60 volts. The higher the voltage, the more power you're gonna have stored, if that makes any sense. So volts times amps equals watts okay volts times amp hours whenever you see hours think storage think capacity okay 60 volts times 20 amp hours is 1200 watt hours similarly 60 volts at 20 amps is going to give you 1200 watts so like i said this bike is capable of putting out 40 amps of power i didn't say amp hours i said amps and the difference being those amps are how much output of power you can put, not capacity. When you see the amp hour or the watt hour, think capacity, okay? So for example, with this bike, we have a 60 volt battery with 20 amp hours of storage. 
but it's able to put out a maximum theoretical of 40 amps. So 60 times 40 would be 2400 watts. Does that make sense? So if you're not adding the amp hours and you're doing 60 times 40 amps, the total power output, or I guess you could think of it as like horsepower in a way, would be 2400 watts, okay? Remember, whenever you see watt hours or amp hours, think storage, not power, okay? If you take the hours away from it and it's just amps and watts, then you're talking about power. So this bike is capable of theoretically putting out with this battery and this controller, 2400 watts. I believe that this particular hang time motor is limited to 2200 watts peak, but let's assume it can put out 2400 watts. So now you can do some math backwards and figure that if you're getting 2400 watts out of the motor and you only have 1200 watt hours of capacity, that means that you're going to be using up 2400 watts in one hour basically. So 2,400 watts in an hour, when you only have a 1,200 watt hour capacity battery, that means you could theoretically run this battery down in 30 minutes. If you held the motor wide open at 2,400 watts for a half an hour, you would completely drain this battery, at least in theory. Now the reality is you're not going to be doing that when you ride it, but that's the general concept of volts times amps equals watts. So let's say you have a 48 volt system with a 10 amp hour battery pack, which is a little more normal, kind of on the lower end these days. But let's say it's just a 10 amp hour at 48 volts. Now, if you multiply that together, that's going to tell you you have 480 watt hours of storage in that battery. Okay. So depending on what type of motor you have, let's say you have a, let's just say you have a 475 watt, 500 watt ish peak output motor. That system is going to be able to run that 500 watts or 480 watts, let's call it for one hour because you have 480 watt hours of pattern of battery capacity, meaning you have 480 watts that can be put out for one hour. If you have a 1200 watt hour battery, you can put out 1200 watts for one hour. Same with the amps. If you have an, ex an example, this battery right here, if you have a 20 amp hour battery, you can put out 20 amps for one hour out of this battery. If you have a 40 amp hour battery, which you won't really see very often, you could theoretically put out 40 amps for one whole hour. So you'd be able to max this controller out at 40 amps for one whole hour. So you're able to do the math and kind of figure out forwards and backwards how long the bike is gonna last depending on what power level you use it at. So if you use this bike at say 500 watts and you have a 1200 watt hour battery, you're gonna be able to get roughly two and a half hours of range out of this particular bike. Now let's say you're in pedal assist one and you're only putting out 300 watts of power. You're going to be able to supply 300 watts of power divided by 1200. That's going to be able to give you a total of four hours of output at 300 watts per hour. Does that make sense? Now these are all hypothetical numbers. You know, your real world range may vary, but this just gives you an idea of kind of what these numbers mean. Now there's one final thing that's important with e-bikes that you may need to know, which is charger power. First okay. you divide the amp hours of the battery by that number of your charger. Now let's say you have a three amp charger like this bike comes with, you're going to be able to charge this battery up in just under seven hours because you divide the 20 by three. Now, if you had a four amp charger for this battery, you could charge this battery up in about five hours. So if you're curious about how long it is going to take you to charge a, a bike or a battery that you're looking to buy, all you need to know is the amp hour capacity of the battery, the voltage, and you can find out the watt hours, and then you can do all the math yourself. So basically, if you're looking at a 48 volt system and it has a 10 amp hour battery and you're looking at it and it says it has a two amp charger, you know it's gonna take you 10 amp hours divided by two amps is gonna take you roughly five hours to charge that battery. 
Now they may provide you with that information or they may not. But this way, if you refer back to this video, you should be able to figure out exactly how much power you can put out of the bike or battery for how long and also how long it's going to take you to charge your bike with a particular charger and all the other questions you may have about storage and range and capacity you can find out as long as you know the voltage the amperage and you can figure out the watt hours a lot of times you won't see the watt hour information that won't be listed but you will know what volt the bike is if it's a 36 volt 48 volt 60 volt or a 72 volt you're probably going to be able to find that information fairly easy and then finding out the amp hour capacity of that battery remember anytime you see that that letter h on the end of amps or watts the small h right here that is indicating capacity okay think volume of say gas in a gas car right it's like the size of the gas tank it's how much energy you can store if you don't see the hour at the end of it and it just says amps or watts that's power that's how much energy can be put out by the bike or the battery itself okay so for example your controllers are always going to say a maximum amperage your batteries are almost always going to say amp hours because they're referring to the storage of the battery and the voltage is never going to be volt hours there's no such thing voltage is the total power that can spin the motor think top speed when you see voltage the higher the voltage the faster the motor can spin okay the higher the amperage the more power or torque or energy you can put into that motor now when you add them together volts times amps equals watts okay so a 60 volt battery times a 40 amp controller is going to give you a 2400 watt theoretical maximum output that doesn't mean that your bad that your motor can take that power or that it can output it but it does mean that you theoretically have the ability with the voltage and the amperage of your controller to put out that kind of power now each motor is going to have a continuous running wattage for example this motor is 1500 watts continuous that's its rated capacity for continuous use. It does have a peak output of 2200 watts and every motor is gonna be different. So I hope I cleared up a lot of the questions for you regarding amperage, voltage, and wattage, as well as amp hours and watt hours. If you have any questions in particular, or if you're looking at a bike and you just can't seem to figure out all these little bits and quirks together, or you're just not sure, leave a comment below i'll definitely reach out to you i answer every question that i get in my comment section i believe it's a really important part of what i do i like to help people out i know that when i first started with e-bikes i didn't know a lot of this information and i've learned it over time it seems complicated at first but it really isn't it's fairly basic some simple math and you can figure all this out yourself so if you appreciate this video hit that like and subscribe button if you're interested in this particular 2024 wired freedom check out my videos on the new update that will be coming out they've added another rear battery to the rear rack and they've also increased the power output of this motor from 2200 watts to 3200 watts they've increased the torque they've also made these 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes into four piston 203 millimeter rotors front and rear they've really done a lot and they've increased the controller from a 40 amp controller to a 45 amp controller so this thing is just really a beast of a bike it's got full suspension hydraulic brakes integrated front and rear lights it's got a rack in the back it's just really able to do a lot and it's still only 19.99 plus tax and shipping which is really incredible they were able to add that extra battery and increase the power and the motor and the brakes all for the same price so check the link in the description if you're interested in buying one of these it really helps out the channel a lot hopefully i'll be getting a new version that's going to be coming out soon right now they only have a prototype out of the new bike but it's going to be coming out really soon in fact anyone that orders the 2024 wired freedom from the website using my link or not will get the newest version with the dual battery system so Thanks for watching. Again, like I said, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll reach right out to you.